Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Sports Sunday. The huge breaking news we brought to you in the last few minutes is that Rafa Benitez has been sacked by Everton today. The club only announced this five minutes or so ago. Let's get straight to Finch Farm, Everton's training ground. Uh, ben Ransom is there for us. Good afternoon to you, Ben. Uh, well, just take us through what's happened today and, and when this news broke. Yes, Jules, it was the news we have been uh, waiting for. As you know, we've been here since uh, early hours of this morning, just uh, waiting for the expected departure of Rafa Benitez from Everton after his future was under discussion last night, after the board met, after they spoke to the owner, Farhad Mashiri. Well, the decision has been taken as we expected. Rafa Benitez has left Everton. He's no longer Everton manager. After 200 days in charge here, he has now gone. The club confirmed the news just a few moments ago. They've released a brief statement on the website. It simply says Benitez departs as Everton manager. They can confirm that he's left his position. He joined Everton in June 2021. He's left with immediate effect. An update on a permanent replacement will be made in due course. So let's not forget what's brought us to this point as well. We saw that banner again, didn't we, unfurled as Everton were beaten by Norwich yesterday in the Premier League. A really humbling and disappointing defeat. The fans have simply had enough. The banner unfurled, calling for him to be sacked. We'd seen that before. We've heard fans bemoaning really what they're seeing in terms of performance results. Not good enough for Rafa Benitez. After it has to be said a good start because when he joined the club, of course, there was a lot of scepticism. Of course, the Everton fan base took some winning over given his history with their great rivals, Liverpool. But at the start of the season, things were promising. They got some half decent results, but in recent months, that's completely gone. They've only had one Premier League win since September. They've slipped down now to 15th in the Premier League table after that loss yesterday, just six points above the bottom three. So in many respects, that defeat against Norwich made his position untenable. He had a fit squad for that one. First team players were back for that game yesterday. So I think that was kind of the last chance for him to save himself with the team that he had been lacking with the top players like Dominic Calvert-Lewin back in the side. But the performance not good enough, the result not good enough. And Everton this afternoon have confirmed the news, which we knew was coming to be fair, that Rafa Benitez has now left his job as Everton manager. Well, and the big question now, Ben, is, is where do they go from here? It's the uh, sixth new manager they're going to need to appoint since Roberto Martinez left in 2016. What do they do next? That's exactly it. Well, in that statement, it said uh, news on a permanent new manager would be updated in, court, in due course. Well, that's slightly different if you, if you take you back a few months to when we heard from Manchester United. Remember when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer left his job? Then it was very much they set out the plan in that statement about to bring in an interim manager before appointing a permanent manager. Well, by the sounds of the statement from Everton, they're looking for a permanent manager straight away. However, uh, the caveat to all of that, of course, is that they do have potentially a ready-made caretaker in the midst here. Duncan Ferguson's done it before. When Marco Silva left, he took charge of the first team for four games. He revitalised the club. It was a similar kind of mood around the club at that point. Things were really not going very well on the pitch. There was huge disappointment. You remember Goodison Park had become fairly toxic with regards to the home manager, with regards to the team and the way they were playing. Well, Duncan Ferguson overnight completely lifted that gloom. He's such a cult hero around Everton. So you wouldn't be surprised if he was given the caretaker role, potentially even until the end of the season. Perhaps for him, he'd want a, a full uh, kind of few months in the job, uh, taking the team right through to the end of the season to be able to regalvanise that team and to, to show his uh, merits, I guess, in that job. And then beyond that, names that have been talked about already. Obviously, Wayne Rooney has been linked straight away given the relative success he's managing to have at Derby in extremely difficult circumstances there, keeping their fight for survival in the championship alive, despite everything, almost having one, maybe two hands tied behind his back in that particular role. So Wayne Rooney's name being mentioned, Frank Lampard out of work. He is always mentioned when a Premier League job comes around. And I know that here at Everton, there are still a lot of admirers for Roberto Martinez, former manager that you mentioned there, left in 2016. He's someone who was in the frame when Benitez was given this job in the summer potentially could they speak to Belgium about trying to get Roberto Martinez back either now or maybe in the summer. 
obviously that's got to be put up against whether Martinez and Belgium wants to stay in that position with the World Cup, of course, coming up at the end of the year. So lots to think about. That's all speculation at this stage. But certainly by the sounds of the statement, Everton, the Everton ownership, Fahad Mashiri will be looking for a permanent manager. OK, Ben, we'll leave it there for now. But thanks very much indeed. That's Ben Ransom at Finch Farm with the news of Rafa Benitez's dismissal at Everton. Of course, with his ties to Liverpool, as, as Ben was explaining, Benitez always had his work cut out trying to win over the Everton fan base. And following Carlo Ancelotti's departure to Real Madrid after 18 months in charge, it looked like Farhad Mashiri was set to turn to the former Liverpool boss. No, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. He wouldn't be welcome here. It's a tough question, isn't it? Really. I think he'll instantly divide the Everton fans. That's the problem. Despite those reservations, Benitez was indeed appointed on a three-year contract. It's a long time ago, you are fighting for your club and then it's what I will do now. So if you are the manager, you have to defend your club in any context. In this case, uh, I will fight for Everton, I will try to do my best every single game. And they got off to a good start under him. A five-game unbeaten run in all competitions. They're averaging over two goals a game at the time. All was rosy. But despite the positive start, a transfer cloud hung over Benitez with fan favourite James, uh, James James Rodriguez frozen out of the first team squad before he eventually sealed the move to Qatar. You know, the financial fair play rules, the problem that we have with uh, salaries and uh, to bring players in. So it was important for us to, be, to create some space for another player. Uh, that wasn't the only transfer battle going on behind the scenes at Everton, with influential director of football Marcel Brands leaving the club in December, alongside the head of recruitment Greta Steinson and the scouting manager Dan Purdy, a move which was seen as a, a power boost for Benitez. I don't think Marcel Brands wanted Rafa Benitez at the club. I think on the back of the last home game, there was a video going around social media where Marcel Brands actually confronts a supporter, or they confront him, and he said it's not all about the players. So there was definitely a divide there. Everton struggled to recapture their early season form, producing an eight-game winless run as they dropped down the Premier League table. And things didn't get much better against Benitez's former employers, Liverpool. Serious questions were starting to be asked of the Everton manager. But Mashiri took to national radio to throw his support behind Benitez. It means a lot because I'm talking with him all the time, talking with the board. Everybody's very supportive and he's just repeating what he told me uh, in our <laughs> conversation. So he's really desperate to do well. So. You cannot blame him for spending money. You cannot blame him for trying his best. What I say is just uh, we have to be sure that we stick together and we do things uh, in the right way. And that vote of confidence seemed to work. Everton winning their next game against Arsenal. But they couldn't capitalise on that result, failing to win their next three games. And that was compounded by a transfer saga surrounding popular left black Luca Dean, the Frenchman, sealing a move to Aston Villa with what seemed to be a parting shot aimed at the manager. But the left back claims he's been forced out of Goodison Park by Benitez, declaring sometimes it only takes one person from outside to destroy a beautiful love affair. Uh, but just days after that departure, Benitez is now following him out the door, leaving Everton just six points above the drop. Where did it go wrong then? Because, as we said, the season started pretty well for Benitez and Everton. They won four of their first seven league games, drawing a couple with just the one defeat. However, since then, uh, nine defeats in their last 12 league games, picking up an average of just 0.4 points per game.